Welcome back, people. It's your boy, Cardell Jones and Tyvis Powell. Big what shout up? out to our partners, Kings, for partnering up with us to get this podcast rolling, man. Got my one of my all-time favorite um, roommates, teammates, people whoa, um, in the whoa, world, Tyvis Powell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm your only roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I wish your only roommate. Ain't no, ain't no That's favorite. a good point. Your only That's, a good point. Point. That's a good point. But speaking of Kings, man, speaking of my roommates, when we was young and dumb back in those dorms, man, Think about how many times we we took that trip to Kings and got a king. Ooh, wait a minute, at first, bro. At first, you know they used to they used to deliver on campus at first. So we used to just have them deliver it to us, and then once we moved <laughs> off campus, that's when we started pulling up like every week, bro. Uh, and just saying, you you can almost it's like Kings one of those food. It's like a comfort food, but it's like a place that you can't burn yourself out of. I mean, the menu is so small, it's so simple. But it's good. It's gonna hit the spot every time. For sure. Like for me, <laughs> I, every time I come to Columbus, me and Lauren is like, we going to K's off rip. I got to hear them say hot chicken, hot chicken. What combo you picking? You understand? No, nah, it's funny. I got a family friend actually in Columbus, and um, he wasn't a big Kings guy, and so I turned him on the Kings. And every time he called me, now like, hot chicken, hot chicken. What combo you picking? <laughs> yeah, so that's crazy. And just think about how Kings wasn't even in. Well, it wasn't in Cleveland until just a recent, and yeah. we didn't get hit to that till we got to school. So right. when people was talking about Kings, 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 I'm like, what? What is that? Like, yeah. I ain't missing I nothing. Then, then you tried it, then it's like, ain't no going back. Yeah, I remember when I came down on my official visit, uh, they was like, they was like, oh, you got to go to Kings. I'm like, what is Kings? They like. Trust me, bro. Just, just come. I was like, all right, yeah. come on, for sure. We went, bro. I've been hooked ever since, man. I had it's the sauce, man. I was like, man, yeah. listen. I had to get what, what do I don't know what they got in that sauce, bro. But I got to have it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so many extra sauces, ridiculous. Yeah, I feel you. Speaking of sauces, man, I guess we can get into some Buckeye football, and we and, and it's so exciting that they have a spring ball this year. You know, it sucks that last year COVID canceled a lot of that stuff, uh, spring sports period. Um, which guys do you think, which group of, which group do you think need to bring that sauce, that fire to pretty much get that mean, bad taste out of their I mouth? I mean, I'm biased, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, the DBs always is going to have energy, but, you know, aside from them, that D-line always it's just it's something about the D-line. When they start making plays, it's just it's contagious. You know, once yeah. they start flying around and getting in that backfield, they make the quarterback get them happy feet and start throwing passes. And it's like once everybody get in the sink, man, that, it's just unbelievable. It's unstoppable. So I'm excited to see what the D-line got to do because they, you know, it's a lot of people. Well, I won't say a lot, but, you know, they lost some going to the draft. And, you know, with the secondary, you know, the way – that they got talked about last year, you know, they gotta they gotta come back and you know got go back to being BIA. So I'm excited to see how they doing with that. Yeah, yeah. But one thing that OSU has missed this past year was that predominant pass rusher that we used to see in that Chase Young, that Joey Bosa, that Nick Bosa, sure. you know, the Taekwon Lewis and Jalen uh homes and stuff like that. And that made, I mean, you can attest to this, that made you guys job on the back end. Oh. Oh, you know, I, we, you know. I, I had Joey. We was we was good. Listen to me. I'm like, I know yeah. the ball coming out soon. Damn, yeah, man. When you ain't got that, when you ain't got that in the secondary, man, it, it, it could get tough, man. Cause it's it's a lot of like trash routes and Christmas tree routes that can get ran, man. And if, if that if it don't get there, you on that island by yourself, and it get kind of lonely out there. So you definitely the D line has always been the DB's best friend. So. I'm I'm excited to see what they you know I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna figure it out. One thing about Coach Johnson, he gonna get him one for sure. He gonna find for it. Sure. And they had, you know they got such a great recruiting class coming in with the freshman, uh, the dude Sawyer. I think he's from Pickerington. I want to say. Uh, I think he's there. He's supposed to make a huge difference. So I'm excited. I know they're yeah, gonna figure something out. Yeah, and, and and a guy that you usually don't see. You know, making a lot of disruption in the backfield as far as the pass game, uh, the material D lineman, but we got a great one coming back. And Haskell to Rascal. You know, sure. so I'm, pretty, I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. I know it sucks that he can't uh, be a spring ball right now, Dylan, recovering from a, a minor surgery, but um, I'm excited for him. But, you know, flipping sides of ball, clearly I'm going to be eyes on me personally at the quarterback position because right. you and is, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a position where this is a unique time because last couple of years, we knew who the guy was going to be and we was getting that guy ready. 
This yeah. year, they're trying to find out who it is. So it's a legit battle. I mean, years before, especially when Justin first came in, oh, yeah, it's a battle between him and, and I think it was Tate Martell. Then, I think he was still there at the time. Well, we're going to let him battle it out. But we knew that Justin came there to be the starter and it was preparing him to be the guy. The year before, we knew Dwayne was going to take over for JT, and clearly JT was the guy for 18 years. <laughs> so now we look at it, we're putting ourselves we're putting ourselves in a situation where, when I say we, I mean Buckeyes, Buckeye Nation, us alumni, and, and the team are putting ourselves in a situation where we legit don't know who our starters going to be going into fall and getting ready for the season. But that's a good problem to have because we got two or three guys that's well enough and that's capable enough to lead this team. To, to deep into the to deep into the season. I mean for sure. I mean everybody right now, I guess the penciled in is CJ. That's he's penciled in. And you know, we would think that he would be the next guy in because you know he's come in, you know, if Justin, you know, had a shoestring problem or something like that, he's been the guy that we've seen. So it's the fate the odds is like slightly for him, but you you're right though. It's you never know. And it's, yeah. it's, we don't know. Like, we don't know. But yeah. the, good thing about, the good thing about it is whoever it is, you know, they got playmakers on the outside. So it's going to make Us. their job a lot easier. They got some linemen coming back. So it, it's whoever it is just need to, you know, they got weapons. They just need to make sure they, you know, up ready to step up and make the correct throws and make the right plays. That's what that's what my next point I was leading to because whoever going to be that quarterback whoever's going to take the reins over you know as a, 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 a last couple of years a unbelievable quarterback play they're stepping into an unbelievable situation with the the weapons that they have on offense a returning running back you know three of the mm -hmm. five starters on up front and there's some young guys that showed some promise last year and then clearly the two big names in the country pretty much on the receiver side is Wilson and Olave. And then yeah. the complement of players that they have with those guys, including the tight end position. I mean, whoever is going to yeah. step into this quarterback position, yeah. it, I, I almost feel like it I, was when I, you I, did. I want, yeah, when, I, when you I did. Know what <laughs> this guy's going to feel like because when I stepped there and I had an opportunity to play, it was like, uh oh, look at all this talent around me. It was like, mm. don't mess it up. That's <laughs> like, just give him, look, just give him a chance. Just throw yeah, the ball and make him have a chance. Just, I yeah, promise you, they're going to make it. Hey, just put it in the area, put it, in, put it around those guys, and, and you have an opportunity. Hey, if, if, if you can't get the pass game going, guess what? You give it to one of the best backs in the country. So, you know, um, but you know what, though? The good thing about that is, you know, it, with your, when you came in, like, they're going to have the same situation. Like, from a defensive standpoint, we knew, like, we got to get you the ball. Like, we got to get Cardio the ball just so he could get comfortable. Because we know – we knew it was going to be some jitters. You even told me in the team up north, guys, when you yeah. when you failed to get the first down, which I can't believe you failed to not get that first down. It, it, oh, yeah. First, yeah, first yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Talk about some – talk about some, I had a little jitters. I had a little <laughs> – <laughs> legit, just legit. So, like, so, so as the defense, you know, we like, you know, we gotta give them the ball back. So you know, once you get the ball, if, as the, as the game goes on, you know, you get you calm down. You know, you start. Right, I got this type thing. So that's yeah. what the defense gonna need to do this year. It's gonna they're gonna have to step up. They can't obviously not have a year like they had last year. They're gonna have to make more plays and make sure that that quarterback get the ball more so he can get more comfortable when it comes season time. Yeah, one thing I said about last year leading into this year as right when the national championship game was over. I want to see, and it's hard to critique, uh, critique a coach when he has so much success on a high level with Coach Combs mm -hmm. and calling the plays now, but I would like to see a little bit of that defensive coordinator power given a little bit too much to, to more to Coach Johnson, just because you can attest to this, Coach Combs is one of the best position coaches out there on For any sure. level. Sure. And his track record speaks for itself. So when I'm a dominant position coach that put me in this position where I had an opportunity to coach, I, I had an opportunity to call the defensive players at the Ohio State University, it takes away from me and my expertise as being that best in the nation cornerbacks coach. For sure. So when he went, when this was with Coach Combs, this is what I can imagine him doing and, and as a defensive coordinator because it happened with having a quarterback coach as a coordinator as well. When sometimes you might, you hit and play on the film and, and you coaching your guys and cover three and, you know, way get a hitch caught on him or 10 yard stop or something like that. And everybody thinks it's a corner's back fault, but no, that 
that nickel defender that let linebacker didn't buzz under the flat fast enough. For sure. Or he, yeah, or so stuff like that. That happens so, a lot of the time. Exactly. So Coach Collins, I can measure him and his means, you know how he is. He he see a problem, he dressing it right now. He hitting pause. He got to run out and go find a linebacker room. Hey, uh, uh Barry, you supposed to fly under that flat. He got to be, you probably had a pick six or something like that. And then now, okay, Coach, I got it next time. Now he running back to his room. Finish watching the plays and da da da. Okay, but I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think Coach Combs was doing it like that because, I mean, he was like he was the he was the D coordinator last year, so it's kind of like, I mean, he definitely was in the DB room for sure. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure. yeah no, not necessarily I, saying that he was legit doing that. I'm just saying it, I'm pretty sure having a D coordinator role was taking was taking a, a lot of time and a lot of effort out of his his specialties of coaching his DBs. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Not necessarily yeah. like, oh, he really ran out of the room. But I would like to see maybe some of that row is shedded on, on Coach Johnson a little bit to, to ease up Coach Combs to coach these young guys. Because they got a lot of talent on the back end and a lot of young guys who mm-hmm. are expected to, to step up and play and be the next Marshawn Lattimore and be the next freaking Denzel Ward or, or, one of, or you and Von Bell on the back end. And Lee Cooper, well, one, or two things, one or two things has to happen. Either – he gonna have to let the let Coach Johnson help him out at defensive coordinator on some input, or he just gonna have to be totally hands off and trust that the new DB coach is gonna do the job. Which I know he will because I went down there and sat in on the uh, while he was coaching up some freshmen. He was coaching. And he, I tell you right, listen to me, Eric Buck. I mean, he telling them right now. Right? Oh, for sure. No, I, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting there like, okay, yeah, he ain't lying. That's exactly what I would say. That's exactly what you're supposed to say. Yeah, he. So the new, the new DB coach is 100 percent a good hire. He, he's yeah. hands on. I like now. I don't know if his intensity will match Coach Combs because you know Coach Combs is a fiery guy. I mean, Coach Combs. He he physic he he ain't physically he vocally abused me <laughs> my friend, for one whole year for a whole year and then then it was Eli and then after Eli I don't know what happened he like don't do it no more this is it really makes me upset because yeah, no the, the, the great the great going. thing but the great thing about Coach Combs, Joe, you know, um, when, when he verbally abuses his players, you know, because of something bad, he, he want to embarrass him, want to put him on the spot because no one likes being on the spot like that. But when you guys do something good, he he is your chili. Oh, you know, oh yeah. You get, a, get an interception or a stop or, or PBU or something like that. He on the field with you. He in the quarterback's for ear. Sure. He, for sure. For so sure. Oh, I, mean, I didn't say I didn't say it wasn't worth yeah. it. It's worth it for yeah. sure. I mean, he puts yeah, you he puts you in them tough environments and he gets you ready. Like I think I think Coach Combs' whole mindset is he want to see how mentally tough you are. Like if you can sure. like how how you gonna respond to people talking to you like this? Because once you get on the field, who's to say that that receiver don't talk to you crazy like that? Like yeah. you never know. So he, yeah. I think he do it just to just to get a reaction out of you and see how far your limits go, which is it's great. It's, it worked for me. Helped me out. Yeah. Yeah, and thinking about <laughs> Coach Combs' stories and him getting them players, man. I remember, <laughs> I remember spring ball, spring practice, man. And we used to, and, and kind of going back and watching them practice a little bit and watching them pro day to see how the guys interact with each other now, you see it's a different vibe. I mean, it's still a great culture, but a different vibe, you know? And with us in spring ball, we used to crack heads. Cause oh, we for like, sure. <laughs> you, know, hey, you got all summer to recover. Listen, bro, you, you, do you know you was live? You know live. You was I'm talking about quarterback live. So I remember it was the year, I think it was, I think we, <laughs> it was the year we won a championship, so we was getting ready uh, going into 15. And um, Coach Cole was talking crap, and I think it was the first scrimmage. No, it was the, it was the year of 14. But it was a spring ball of 14, because I, I know who I, I missed second hit. So <laughs> I was going with the twos. I was going with the twos. Or I was like, I was going with the ones. And Daryl Ball was our right tackle, and we had just put in the the uh, the reverse. And I was okay. late. And I told Gary, it was our first group. I told Gary on all day. I'm like, you better you better wear your thigh pads. <laughs> <laughs> I told Gary I thought he all day. You better have your knee pads and thigh pads the other day before I'm coming for you. Because I just got smacked. I just, I, I, I was, we was going into that year because we was going into a quarterback battle. And I thought that I would be pretty much off limits. You can't hit the quarterback because one of these guys might be our back. Why would it, you? Never. Exactly. Never why, why, why would I think that? Exactly. Why would I think that? 
and I get smacked like either the day before or 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 two days before the scrimmage. I get smacked. Was this so was like, it okay, by Steve? No, this wasn't by Steve. No, I got smacked. So long story short, I'm like, you know what? I'm about to lay somebody out today. I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't mind, wait till this is first. Yeah, I can't mind. wait till this first. <laughs> so, so literally, we called a play. My eyes are huge. I'm like this. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Hand the ball off to maybe Curtis Samuel at the time. He pitched it on the reverse of Dontre Wilson. I'm lead blocking. And Daryl Baldwin, he he go down and he coming out too. So, me and Daryl Baldwin was the lead blockers on the corner. Yeah. Which like, Gary Young, yeah, so Gary Young actually read out of it because I think whoever's guarding him was just write him off. So, I'm like, I don't care. I'm about to, I'm going for Gary Young. I'm passing everybody. So, I'm hauling towards Gary Young. I'm about to flip him. I'm like, I got my mind made up. I close my eyes and just dive. And I end up hitting Daryl Ball when I flip the sh- Oh, my God. I flip him up. <laughs> <laughs> I try to chop by the carry guy in our old teammate. Flip him right over me. Listen, so, people don't know the friendly fires be the worst ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, they be real. If people don't know Daryl Ball, he was our right tackle, man. He was the stiffest guy in the world, like, literally. He, he, he you know, Daryl, like, you know how guys can't touch? They tell us Daryl probably can't touch his knees. Like, the stiffest guy in no, the world. No, seriously. Great player. Is, it's facts. Yeah, but it was so funny, man. And then um, just to, I was talking crap to Coach Combs that whole day. Talking about, yeah, watch your boys. I'm going after him today. But he didn't think I was going to try to chop block one of them. He thought I was throwing the ball. He's like, yeah, you better be ready, Carter. You better be ready. I'm thinking to myself, he better be ready. <laughs> and I freaking totally missed him and hit girl ball, flipped him, man. Watching that on film. Coach Herman just turned around like, Dad, what, what are you doing? You know, he's on your team, right? I'm just like, this. yeah, I closed my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to have a mouthpiece. You gonna fall. <laughs> bite, hey, bite down, close your eyes. <laughs> bite down, close your eyes. Lord, that's the best I got for you. No, you, but, think that's, you think that's funny, bro. When they put in that safety blitz, that split Seattle, man, listen, Cardell, I, I ain't never blitzed. <laughs> You know how much we, me and Vine used to beg for safety blitzes. They would never let us do it. So one spring, we was watching the Seahawks, and Earl had a blitz. It was like a delayed blitz. He was like, well, you know what? We're going to put it in. I said, okay. Don't, I like, listen, don't play with me now. I'm like, you got the right one. Don't play with me. He's like, we're going to put it in. All right. Come on. He said, now, Tyrus, when we do it now, you got to let, you got to let Raekwon and Josh go first. You got to let them, because they going to take the, they going to take, one going to take the center, the running back going to pick the other one up, and it's you and the quarterback. I'm like, all right, bet. I'm like, listen, y'all better hurry up, because I ain't, listen, I'm all gas. I'm going through the <laughs> ain't got no patience. I'm coming to get them. <laughs> you know how y'all, y'all do the fake, ugh. I gave yeah. it up, 12. I gave it up. <laughs> yeah, like, it's on the floor. Well, I done messed up, so it's on the floor now. <laughs> so, instead of walking back, I stand at the line. I stand at the line. <laughs> Worst decision I ever made. That man, Jacoby, took me on a ride of my life. <laughs> okay. And then time as we taking it out, we ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Jacoby, that short butt, man. <laughs> but man, man, golly, but I, I'm excited for these Buckeyes and the spring ball, man. Spring ball was one of the, the critical points and definitely a young teams, not just a player, a young teams uh, chemistry and, and find out who those guys are. You know, we spoke about this uh, a week ago um, at Roosters about what it means to have or to not have your, your, your leaders in spring ball. I said, it's a double-edged sword because now you put yourself, you put yourself as a, you put yourself in position as a team to find those young leaders that mm. can potentially be in a better position this following year, and it can potentially be one of the guys they turn to if one of these leaders, if a, if a you know a Haskell, you know, not available for a player two or or a uh, God forbid during the season. Now you guys are going to have young proven guys who was forced in this position during spring ball, who mm. are going to just walk into those reins when you know, Haskell leave or these other, you know, leaders that we look up to as as a football team. But also it just sucks because now, it says a double-edged sword, but now it puts those young guys sometimes in a position that they might not be ready for. And True. It, it force a guy to pretty much be out of character in a way because he feel that pressure. Oh, I don't have my Haskell here. Oh, I don't have my other leaders around me. Let me try to be that guy. 
Let yeah. me always be heard. Let me always be seen. Like, you know, and, and, and that's the worst part about team sports. When it's forced, clearly players can pick up on that just like that. For sure. You know, they don't come off as genuine. And now you got your players, when you think you're doing something that's going to rally them together around you as a leader, as a, as a, as a guy, now they kind of shine away, shine away from you a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and it's just crazy. I shared a story that, how JT is such a, a um, unbelievable leader, you know, work hard and he's vocal as well. And I'm just mm -hmm. strictly lead by example. But when I have something to say, it's like, oh, snap, he, he got something to say, you know. Yeah. And JT used to always give like, you know, the, the pregame offensive speeches right after we go back in before we finally run back out in the stadium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I heard. And, Trust me. I heard. Yeah. And, and, and he had a situation where he wasn't able to get one one game and coach. You know, um, Coach uh, Warner at the time thought that I was going to do that. And He's I don't like, know that's what he not, called that's me. That's not who I, I like, I don't, oh, no, let's get a break, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, it's not what, but, like, it's, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come off as genuine. It would exactly, be like, I'm doing exactly. that because, like, that's what y'all, like, used to. But that's not what I do, though. Like, yeah, exactly. That's, that's his, yeah, that's his yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I can what, see that. Yeah, that's what I'm excited about this spring ball because you're going to see some of these unsung heroes. We're going to – people are going to look at that 20 – how 2020 ended with the loss to Alabama and say, okay, well, I'm really excited to see what this guy, what this guy does this following year, 2021. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Spring ball is an opportunity for these younger guys or that guy that everyone's kind of overlooking right now to develop mm -hmm. a name for itself, a position and an opportunity and a place on this team to just going to take off. And camp oh, yeah. it, hap it happens every year. It's always every, a guy that nobody year. predicts to do something that comes out of nowhere and has an unbelievable spring ball and it carries on the camp. And just like exactly. he just comes out of nowhere. It happens every single year. Exactly. So that's what I'm kind of excited about with these, uh, you know, our, our, our known guys. <laughs> I tell you what, right I tell you what I'm excited about, you know, since the since everybody was clowning the secondary last year and everybody was blaming the secondary, you know, it, this spring ball gives them opportunity because now, I mean, they had it last year, but the problem with the secondary, which a lot of people don't realize is that like they were thin last year. Like it wasn't a lot like the corner at corner position in particular, they were very thin. Like they lost a lot of players. Players got hurt. Some players just wasn't even ready to play. Like it just, it, that's what it is. But yeah. you know, when they had the, they had the two people, the two DBs in the off season with the little uh, police thing, then they lost uh, Cam to the Achilles in the Penn State game. Like that, like these is, you know, Coach Combs like to rotate corners. He couldn't even rotate corners because they were that thin. So it's, yeah, yeah. This, this off season or this spring ball gives the t the players that wasn't quite ready to play a chance to grow up. You know, it's a, you got another opportunity. You're going against two of the bet, the top, if not the best receivers in the college football. So you're getting great reps. And they're going to, I'm pretty sure, you know, at Ohio State, you know, we always tend to try to make each other better. So I'm sure, you know, they're going to give little pointers and tips of things that the DBs can do to be better. And yeah. they, they need to take that time. They need to take that very seriously and use it because, like, we're going to be, you're going to need them this year. <laughs> like, like, we're yeah, yeah, going to need the depth in the second Yeah, year. but I think, Obviously. I think, I think, honestly, that goes back to the, the, um, the whole cancellation of spring ball last year because oh, yeah, now that was a huge, that was you, a huge yeah. punch. It was a yeah, huge now punch when you place. exactly, and not just for the Buckeyes, but for everyone. But but now when you stuck and you put yourself in a position where okay, now you don't know if you have a season, and then you got three weeks to prepare for a season. Three weeks to prepare for a season, you getting those guys who you know your guys, your go-to guys, ready. Not the season for sure. play. For sure. You know, everybody look good, and you know when I say uh, t-shirt and panties, I mean you know shorts and working out stuff like that. But it's different when you got another guy running full speed at you and you got pads on and then, God forbid, you got to make a tackle. You know, so that's completely different. So a guy can look good <laughs> doing all that. Yeah, a guy can you, look you better kill or be killed. What you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Somebody that's running easier. full speed at you, you better run full speed back. <laughs> yeah, clearly, that hey, easier said than done. But, You're right. Um, yeah, but I, I'm like, I can't wait for those guys to get a lot of missed reps. Uh, trying to make up from the lack of play this past year and no spring ball from last year. So um, I, then, I can't wait, man. Another thing that I, a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, without spring ball, you know, Coach Combs couldn't put in – he couldn't install his defense that he wanted to put in. You know, they just basically went off of what Halfley did. 
Cause yeah. that's what that's what they knew. Like they knew that exactly. like the back of their hands. So he had no choice but to keep running that because they didn't have time to install what he wanted to install. Now that they got spring ball, you know, he got time to put in his plays and put yeah. in his schemes and stuff like that. So it's it's definitely gonna be a different defense for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. But like I said, I can't believe I just sat here and talking about so much defense and, and not offense. I mean, what I don't you mean? know. You, you I don't wanna, know. You're trying to cross over to the dark side. Yeah, That's I'm what just saying. saying. I don't know. I don't know when the last time that Ohio State had so much firepower, firepower returning on on offense like this. And like I said, it's, it's going to be a quarterback stream oh, to 20, be 2015. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. But still, yeah, it's going to be a quarterback <laughs> stream just being behind center and knowing that you got a dominant guy on your right. <laughs> well, two of them. All you got to do is both sides. you just got to give them an opportunity to make it. Throw a 50-50 ball. Like, just give them a chance. And that, and they're going to nine times out of ten, they're going to make the play. And if that's if that, if you're nervous about that, listen, just turn around and hand this ball off. He going to make something happen. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, sure. But, I mean, another guy I'm excited about on the offensive side of the ball is T. I mean, he returning for his yeah. fifth year, I believe. And, you know, I know last year I didn't bash him, but last year he was like kind of one of my guys that wanted to see step up because he had he showed promise in certain way in certain games in certain situations when JK was banged up or when T got his opportunity. Oh yeah, to the ball. he, was, he used and, to run like a madman for sure. Yeah, so I was almost like, okay, well they brought this guy Sermon in, and now we still have T. Now we just waiting on one of these guys to take the reins and be the guy. Even though Sermon kind of took that over at the end of the season, especially the way he performed versus Michigan State and in the Big Ten Championship game, clearly, and then being banged up um, in the championship game versus Alabama. But he had a pretty good game versus Clemson as well before that. Um, I think T going to go into the season with something to prove and the biggest chip on his shoulder as – I mean, it's not even a chip because his shoulders are huge. So a boulder on his shoulder, <laughs> a freaking boulder on his shoulder yeah. that – you know, for the last two years, well, pretty much his whole career, he was almost that that second slash third option when it comes to giving, you know, the ball to a guy because Justin was also an unbelievable running threat. Um, I, I think he's going to go into this season and and show everybody like, hey, you know, I'm here for a reason. I'm the guy. And, you know, I belong here. For sure. He ain't, he has no choice. It's it's yeah. really not negotiable for him. Um, he got all I'm pretty sure all he hears about is that, you know, we got these freshmen coming in. They're supposed to be all these good and, you know, they're, they're quick and make plays. Like, that that's motivating to somebody. You know, it's like, oh, for real? All right, well, let me show you something. Let me show you what I've been working on. So yeah. he definitely got a lot to prove. And the good thing is they're going to give him all the opportunity to prove, it, you know? Yeah, just like, just like last year as well. Yeah, they, he had yeah, a lot of opportunity year. to take the reins over. But, you know, yeah, it just, him and it, Sermon was kind of – doing the same thing in the beginning of the season. Yeah, you know, they have that. They have, yeah, a, you know, a, a couple of good runs, and then you look at them like, what are you doing? And stuff like yeah. that. So I think he hit the ground running this year. Yeah. I mean, hopefully. No, hopefully. You know, that's, if, if not, then, hey, somebody, somebody will figure something out. Yeah. Other than that, man, I, that's all I can say about the Buckeyes right now. I just know I'm looking forward to that spring game, April 17th, I believe. I think What's that's y'all correct. Town for, but I'll be tuned in. Oh, oh yeah, you're not gonna be there. Nah, I won't be there, man. It sucks. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, I have to make the. Is they letting people in? That's, that's I don't cool. know. I don't know. I'm not for sure. I think they are. I um, need to, the last I thing I've been hearing at, about. I got to holler yeah. at somebody. They go. They go let me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. gave my whole wrist. To that university, yeah. they go let me in. <laughs> yeah, the last thing, the last time I heard uh, about Big Ten attendance, it was all about the season and, and trying to make sure they play twelve games, all this other stuff. So nothing about the spring game, yeah. But it's a funny story about not letting you in and stuff like that. I was at the pro day, and uh, it got to a point, you know, everybody was all on the field, and, you know, everybody's running forties and stuff like that. So everybody all over the place, and it got to a point when Justin and the receivers about to get ready to throw. And, uh, you know, they get the coaches and everybody on the field. And uh, they, they backed off Coach Meyer. And I came up to him. I said, they don't care you built this shit. They kicked you right off the field, didn't they? <laughs> 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 and he was dying laughing. I said, see, I forget, I said, see, I said, I said I forget about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, What's up? Back up. Back on up. Yeah. I said, hey, get off the field. 
he crazy though, because when he, I think when Trevor Lawrence had his pro day, he was like standing right next to dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> how, right you know, that's right how home. he eventually. That's how he eventually was with, with Justin and um, being next to Coach Day. That guys were chatting the whole time, but it was pretty cool to see Coach Meyer back in in the Woody and um, kind of uh, it, he kind of seemed like the the past, the present, and the future type of deal with him and the players and, and Coach Day. So I was like, look at this. Look, it makes for a great picture. <laughs> it might be a lot of money one day, man. It's a lot of history in there, a lot of legacy up in that, and one picture yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, he. I'm sure he's gonna do his thing. He's gonna do something in Jacksonville for sure. I mean, he got the he got the budget for it, and he got the draft picks. He's stepping in the best situation, so I'm sure. Yeah, one you, know, you know what they, one thing about Coach Meyer, he's gonna figure something out. Yeah, for sure. That's what's up, man. Well, thank you for Kings for well, you know partner with us to to get this cast rolling. And uh, until next time, man, we catch you guys later.